And then Mustafa, I see you. Welcome to Clubhouse. I do see you have something in your bio. That's wonderful. I know you're brand new. If you can do me a favor, we're going to go ahead and let you unmute and ask your question. But just uh, to be, we'd really like you to make sure to connect to Instagram or Twitter as well. Uh, yeah, sure. It's my first day there. Uh, I'm from Pakistan. Uh, I have a confusion. Uh, I'm in the last year of my college. And I have a startup idea, uh, but I have a little budget, uh, about 10K dollars. So mm -hmm. it is a better idea to invest 30% of it uh, in marketing to grab the audience and to go, go for the funding or venture capital. Or uh, I should go for the uh, improving the product and then go for the marketing. Well, that's a great question. I'm going to leave this to the panel. I'm sure they're going to have some qualifying questions with that one, um, with that one, um, or some clarifying questions, I should say. Would anybody like to speak into Mustafa? He has a startup business that he's looking at with about a $10,000 budget, and he has an idea right now, and he's not sure if he should just get the product or service worked out first with that budget or if you should put 30% into marketing. Anybody want to speak into that? Michelle, please, passing it to you, my friend. Good to see you. You as well. Okay, so my first question is what, and please forgive me, what is the product or service? Uh, I can't share it right now. Uh, it's under production. Okay, so it's a product. Uh, this is like a service, uh, but we are in the de development phase. Okay, so I think the thing is, is you're going to, do you even know who you're going to market to? Yeah, uh, it, they are local people uh, uh, in the country, in my city. Okay, so local people in your country. Now, I'm just going to give you an example. So I sell women's clothes. Um, on one point of view, I would say, well, I all women can wear my clothes. But do all women want to wear my clothes? No. So if I market to all women, they're not going, it's just a waste of marketing money. So you have to have like a pretty niche. You have to know exactly who you're marketing to. Does that make sense? Yeah. So my concern with, you, you know, the, the vague question, I'm trying to help you out as much as I can, but it, it's difficult to answer without knowing exactly what it is. Do you have trials and any prototypes that people have been using or trying? Uh, no, uh, it's uh, something uh, I want to uh, implement some different idea, uh, which is not there in the market. Uh, so we are uh, developing the MVP and then we are going for the investors and looking for some seed money. Uh, then we are going to deploy that. Okay, so the $10,000, is that going to fund you making this product? Uh, I'm an undergraduate student of computer science. Uh, we are two partners. Uh, we have total budget of twenty uh, twenty thousand dollars and uh, we are developing this product right now. Okay, so you have enough funding to develop the product and an excess of ten thousand? Yes. Okay. So what are your other options for using the 10,000? I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Did you understand that? What, what, what is your budget for the other 10,000 besides marketing? Uh, I think I should keep it for the running the system uh, around uh, eight, to, eight to 10,000 for the running the systems and uh, we have uh, $10,000 uh, which we can invest in marketing or we can save it if uh, sometime if in future we get uh, in troubles so we can make uh, we can make it going okay so it's it's just a very difficult question to answer so i I'm, what i'm going to say is this 
it's difficult to know who exactly to market to and you don't want to spread your marketing so thin that it's not really touching anyone. And at the same time, you're not going to be able to sell a product that nobody knows exists. So it's going to be that fine balance. And I'm sure there are other mods as well on the stage that can probably delve a little bit deeper into that. But hopefully I'm, I'm helping make sense and guide you a little bit. I would say definitely not all of it in marketing. And you're going to need to kind of do some test marketing with small dollar amount to see which people are more receptive to help you narrow down. I see Fahad, did you also no, want to speak into this? Thank you, Cheryl. So, Mustafa Bhai, this is the, I'm Fahad, I'm in Pakistan too usually, but I live in Canada. What I will recommend to you, uh, you need to, have you heard about Jumpstart Pakistan or Lift Pakistan? No. Okay, go to my profile, follow me. I'm going to connect you to four or five people. Like these are the pioneers, good friends of me, like Khurram Zubairi, Mirza Ali, and there's so much group. Like we are, they, like our vision is to bring $100 billion in Pakistan economy. We have helped a lot of people with startups and startup pitches. What you need is, man, right now, you are you don't even think about spending that money because you need a lot of clarity in your business because you because it's very common in Pakistan, people are like so scared to share their idea that somebody gonna run away with it. My friend, it's not about like holding on to the idea. 99.9% .9 people there fail in execution. They fail miserably. We have coached so many people. Like I've sat on the pitch competitions and so many of them. There's so much more to just marketing. You need to get your basic fundamentals right. So my friend, send me a message, go look up from my profile on Clubhouse, Mirza Ali, Khurram Zubairi, Shafa, uh, Hashanada, uh, UK, but we all have some have no interest in running with your idea and making their own. Usually they help you to, uh, or we will help you to connect with either investor or coach if your business is viable. I hope that helps. I'm Fahad. Yeah, thank you so much, Fahad. Uh, okay. I will connect you. <laughs> Mustafa, quickly, Follow Fahad and everyone here. I just want you to pay attention because that is the magic of Clubhouse and that is the magic of this room. And I cannot wait to see the magic here. Did you see that? Mustafa just connected to Fahad. Wow. So if you have not already, be sure that you are following this amazing club, this amazing room that's been going on for, what is it guys, 35, 36 days, something like that, 24 seven with the most amazing mod panel on Clubhouse. Just decades and decades of experience, success, track records that bar none, and wisdom that you could not pay for, actually. Some of these people do charge tens of thousands of dollars, but some of them wouldn't even charge. They just wouldn't show up and they're here. So pay attention, raise your hand, come up on stage and do me a favor, everyone. If you're here and you're liking this conversation and loving this club, please hit that plus sign. Let's bring a few more people into the room. Your goal, everyone here, is to bring at least five more people into the room. Ready, set, go. And with that, while you hey, guys Cheryl. are pinging, yes? Hey, it's I John the Bomb. John the Bomb. Hey, hey, how are you? Building Building others, others means business. <laughs> That's right. That's right. There so, he is, my man. I, I'm sounding like Daniel. I think my, my voice a little raspy. I went out last night with the guys, a little guys night out uh, in a Whoa. bar outside. Beautiful weather in Chicagoland. We are, uh, this is starting to get summertime, so we're getting ready. But hey, I saw Renee and CJ are next to me. And earlier, Renee spoke up and Shireen, because of Renee's cadence, the way he came out and said his name or just started talking, he sounded like CJ. So as everybody's pinging, maybe we can have a little fun and see if these guys do sound like each other. 
That would be amazing. By the way, John, do you know I lived in Chicago for 13 years? So when you said Naperville and you said Summers, I you took me right back. Oh um, gosh, it's yes. the not, not, I mean I am biased, but I think Chicago, although I'd love to move one day, uh, is the best Chicago land suburb area of summer city on earth. So a little Absolutely. biased, of course. Absolutely. Uh, well, Chicago is the best Chicago I know. <laughs> it's the best. My son used to call it Chago. Um, so what we're going to do, guys, Tian, Jonathan, Abhishek, Rashi, JC, Matt, we're going to get to you in just a quick moment because my friend here, John the Bomb, has a little bit of voice play, or we're going to play some games here, right? Just for a quick minute. Well, it's more just seeing if, if Renee would, wouldn't mind saying hello a few words oh. and then CJ saying hello in a few words because oh, okay. the, 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 the funny thing, I don't know if you were in the room earlier, but Shireen was modding, lead modding and, and Renee said something and she thought it was CJ and oh, Renee and, and CJ have a similar cadence. So I was just joking around. If they don't want to do it, that's fine too. So. No, no, no. Uh, uh, she was kind of tired because if I could sound like CJ, I would be all set for the rest of my life. So. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, this, this I always, okay, wait, a, wait a minute, Rene. I always thought that if I sounded like you, uh, an impressive keynote speaker, I'd be set for life. So we got to figure this out. Would you be making more money with my voice? Absolutely. <laughs> CJ is the man. <laughs> Okay, am I, am I, am I doing the Let's wrong vote. kind of work, Renee? <laughs> Let's vote. Okay, so everybody click your mics if CJ and Renee sound alike. Click your mics, click your mics. I'm getting 50-50, but I don't know who's asleep on the stage, so. <laughs> I Renee, just made Papa Renee, Renee, we're, 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 we're going we're gonna to solve this. We're, we're going to record our audio will speak to, will read the same thing uh, <laughs> and I'll run them through a match up and see how close they are. I love it. By the way, John the Bomb, you definitely sounded like Daniel. I was like, oh no, the boss is here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I got a little little bit of my throat uh, lozenges going. So, uh, but, but let's make sure that Nathan is not a part of it because as a as an Australian, <laughs> he will not be sounding like CJ or Renee. But I can do a very good John the Bomb because building others means business, John. I'm John the Bomb. <laughs> get get oh nasally. God. Get Chicago nasally and you got nah, it. Nah, he, he got it, John, actually. He did. He, he did. He, he smashed it. Right it. I liked it. Really... I liked it. That, that was, was awesome. damn good. Jeez. Cheryl. Okay. Cheryl, hi. Dude, I'd like to hi. do a actor yeah. from, from Uruguay. Okay, wait one second. We have Jude. I just want to give her a little bit of space and grace so she can speak. Well, how are you? How I, are you? I've been listening to this for a long time. And John the Bomb, I was so glad that you had CJ and Renee talk because I thought I'd love to have just the two of them interview each other just for a moment. Because I wasn't looking. I, had, I was on. I was listening. But I was at the farmer's market running around. So I wasn't looking at the screen. And I thought, oh, there's CJ. And then I looked, and when I got here, and it wasn't CJ, it was Renee. And I come out of TV, as you know, and I mean, we've talked about that, Sherilyn. So I really pay a lot of attention to a lot of attention to voice and the quality. And you know, along this line, your one quality and all of these, and some people said confidence to believe in your voice can really encourage people when they come out on stage in the lot. But use your as a Nathan of the of here. I've just been listening today. It's been so much fun on the stage. But but I know that CJ said they might record some copy, but I'd just love to have the two of you interview each other sometime with a couple of questions and just to hear because I truly thought CJ and I've listened to you a number of times and Renee, I follow you too. And when I wasn't looking, I really thought it was CJ. I thought, oh CJ's here. And but that wasn't CJ. So you had us all tricked for a nice. moment. Nice. If Judy is if Jude is saying it, Judith, right? It is the Either truth. Either one. I answered all of the above. Well, it is the truth when you say it. John, he, here's the thing. One, I prior to the SAP, I didn't like my voice. And then enough people were like, oh, you've got a calming voice. You've got this voice. I'm like, okay, I can work with that. But now that you've told me that I sound like Renee, because we don't really know our own voice, right? It's very hard to hear your own voice. 
I, I feel a lot better about my voice. So Dude, thank you're you, a stud. Jude. You've got a great voice and Jude and Jude just nailed it, right? So <laughs> I thought it was a funny little interlude that we had. Sorry, Cheryl, for, for taking over there, but I thought it was so cool when Shireen thought it was CJ and so glad that Jude kind of cemented that thought as well. And, you know, John, it does apply to us. I mean, even though we're having some fun with CJ and Renee and they're such great sports about it, which is wonderful. But it does. Your voice lends itself to confidence when you speak with clarity. And I'm not even talking about articulation or, or how eloquent you are. It's just that that confidence, it's energy and it attracts people to us. So it really does fit into how to run a successful business, even though we're having some fun. So thank you, John, the bomb, Renee, CJ, Cheryl. Always great to be with you. And I'm going to keep I love that, Jude. That was amazing. Absolutely. Now, I just have one question for all the mods that are here. Just you're going to have to, hopefully you're all awake. Click your mics because I was just thinking about this. When Kate or Daniel pop in the room, do you guys feel though it? I just felt like, oh, the boss is here. Cheryl, it's Nathan. Can I add to that? I've been in another room with CJ and Vitali, and then then when we saw the notification that she was there, we all kind of had a little bit of a half <laughs> It's so funny, but yeah, okay. I just I just had to say that. And guys, just so you know, if you're raising your hand and you don't have anything in your bio, we can't bring you up because there are li these little things called bots and they're not real people. And they run around on Clubhouse disturbing stages. So the way you tell us that you're a real person is just to fill a little something out in your bio and then connect your, to yourself to Instagram or Twitter if you can. That's not just for us, that's for you because that's the only way if someone hears something that that they can help you with, that we get to connect with you so and you can connect with us so be sure to do that um and with that i'd love let's see tian we tried to get to you before there was some a little bit of glitchiness with the app are you ready to ask a question now let's try can you hear me uh, yes we can hear you beautiful okay and for those who know my name is tian and uh, i have entrepreneur infopreneur owners to who are struggling with story and stages. To... Can you do me a favor, Tian? Rather than introducing yourself, we, we don't really do that in this room. Can you just start with my question is? Cheryl, yes. Cheryl, real quick, real quick. The mm -hmm. boss arrived. Um, oh, everybody, no. Guys, the boss your is ties. here. Straighten your ties. <laughs> the boss is here. Really? I don't see where. <gasps> she's in. <laughs> she's we're, in. We're, we're being good. We got our work done. We did. We did. <laughs> you guys straighten your desk. What is going on here? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, Kate. We were just joking because where are you there? Where, oh, oh, there you are. We, we were saying when you or Daniel come in, we all kind of go, oh, oh, the bosses are here. <laughs> you guys so, are hilarious. <laughs> we are having some fun. But remember, guys, all of you that are in the audience, it is Saturday night. So we do get a little punchy and we do have a little bit of fun. Um, so do me a favor, keep pinging because I want to make sure your finger gets tired. Ping some more people in the room. It's going to be a crazy Saturday night. Do a little refresh. And then let's see, Tian. You're going to begin now with my question is, my friend, correct? Correct. Oh, my question is, uh, I, ha I have entrepreneur uh, to, to make decision and help them to go to stages. But I find that one of my uh, clients is struggling with uh, get uh, some funds. So I'm looking for any angel investors who is ready to talk to me directly. And if you can DM me, I, I'm ready to talk so I can direct my client to a person who can help him. Thanks Why so didn't much. you tell us what is your business before jumping, asking for angel investor? Can you tell oh, us a little bit you know what, Annabella, we had asked, we had asked him uh -huh. to start with my question is, so oh, um, okay. that's why, that was my fault. I asked him to start with my question is, and it looks like he's looking for angel investors for your business or for your client's business, Tian. 
was the was the investment that you're looking for for your business or is it for your clients? No, business? I want to direct to my I want to direct it to my client to uh, that person. You want to direct your client to somebody that's an yes. angel investor who would like to take this. Go ahead and click your mics. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I see CJ and Renee, and they sound the same, so I don't know who to go to first. <laughs> it, to was Re it was Renee first. Renee. Oh, okay. Renee. Now, actually, I was going to say there are rooms for that where they have angel investors. You probably uh, go to some of those rooms or have your clients go to some of those rooms because they are dedicated just for that. Okay. CJ, did you want to add to that? I do. Here's the thing. First of all, what is your client going to do for the angel investor? What opportunity are they presenting? Is the idea investable? Is is what what they're looking into? That that would be the first stage. The second stage would be finding an angel investor that fits, right? You can definitely go into the pitch rooms, and one of the beauties of it is there's a mix of investors that prefer investing in different things. But on that note, can you at least tell us the industry? Maybe we can point you in the right direction to someone. Just just a brief two sentences about the business that you're looking for funding for for your client. Uh, he's doing uh, the... Uh... The NM, N, NMT are uh, non-emergence transportation. Non-what transportation? Sorry. Non-emergence medical transportation. Hmm. We don't I, understand what you really Annabella. He said. Annabella. He said non-emergent. Non-emergent. Um, which market? Um, in which country? Is it U.S. based or uh, elsewhere? U.S. based. I live in Knoxville, Tennessee. And okay, nice. Yep. Uh, Annabella, do you know anyone in that invests in transportation uh, in the U.S.? In trans I need to know more details about this company and uh, how it operates and how much is it looking for and what is the return of the investment. I actually brought in right now one of my angel investors. He's uh, one of Annabella's angel. He's in the room right now. You can ask him direct. Tom, would you like to answer the question? Let me bring it up to the stage. Hold on. Where is Tommy? Let me see. Yes, I know he came in. Um, but tell us a little bit about your business because I would like to see if I can help you. Yeah, normally my client has a business. He started a, a non-emergency medical transportation. And uh, back in COVID-19, he could, you know, every transportation business is tax since uh, nobody is trying. Uh, if the medical uh, department is doing so, uh, some of the uh, services which are not uh, emergency, they do uh, some um or virtual or like uh, even some appointment are limited. So for that, he he wanna they try he wanna try to 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 rebuild the company the, the, the business because back in 2020 he was trying to to start it and COVID 19 hit the world you know he didn't uh, do anything since now he was trying to reach me so uh, to see what I can help him uh, I try to help him with with uh her ideas and how it can start but he at the end he stuck when it comes to our uh, funds and uh uh you know financial means you know so can you and how much is he looking for though he's looking for uh, thirty thousand oh thirty thousand oh my no oh. that's a um... This is the thing with a low amount like that, I can help you, or we can help you with a private lender. A financial constitution can do that for you. When it comes to numbers like that, you need a private lender or constitution, which means a bank. When it comes to bigger investment opportunity for a startup company, then I'm bringing in the angel investor to your brand and get you funded if it's a good opportunity for investors as well. 
Do you say forty thousand? Yeah, he said he said he need four thousand only because he has four thousand or forty thousand. Forty thousand dollars okay. only. Yeah, he's this is to finance a vehicle, no? Yeah, yeah. He, he can either use a financial institution for that, or he can use a private lender. Is that something that he might be interested in? If he need, uh, he need to talk to somebody who is, uh, who can have uh, now. I can the, help. Yeah, I can you help. Have a time to talk. With, uh, the, to this, yeah. DM me right now and tell me you met me in the million dollar room, and I can, I can definitely help you. You got that, Tian? So go ahead and follow Annabella and be sure to DM her and she's going to help you with that. That's wonderful. I think I'm going to have fun for a long time. Yep. Okay, great. Do you feel served, Tian? Much, much <laughs> and appreciate. And well, we appreciate you. Day. We appreciate you. And thank you for coming up. I'm going to tuck you back into the audience just to keep the stage nice and clean. However, if you'd like to come back up to ask a question, just go ahead and raise your hand, okay? And then... Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, and then, um, guys, just to remind you, JoJo, I see your hand raised. If you can just fill out your bio, we can bring you up. We just can't bring up anybody that doesn't have their bio filled up. And you do need to be 18 years or older. Um, and so with that... Let's go ahead and move to, I'm going to do a quick poll to refresh and make sure I have the order right. It looks like Moaz is next. Moaz, do you have a question for the panel? Uh, okay. Sorry, okay. I'm just busy with something, so I'll, I'll, I'll get back. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, so okay. I'll, I'll get back. Thank you. We'll just take you back into the audience for now, Moaz, but when you're ready, can you do me a favor and raise your hand and we'll bring you right back up. And Jonathan, so good to see you. That's my son's name, so great name. <laughs> Did you have a question for the panel? Hi, everyone. Yes, I do. So my question is, right, I have this business and it's a fitness business. Demand is going awesome so far. The business is growing, but I have a major problem with my supplier. My supplier is Alibaba and the suppliers are a bit unreliable and they don't give me bet, bet the best quality of products and sometimes the contact in between us is a little skewed. So I know you all have many connections and I live in Trinidad so it's, it's a third world country and I really want to access that first world information and probably access a, a, a fitness, a big fitness gym that, that could help me with this problem I have. Hi, Jonathan, that's my question. So uh, can I jump in and say something? So yeah, I just, test... one, I just yeah. wanted to get one clarifying question, and then I'm going to pass it to you, Annabella. Jonathan, the, the, what are you sourcing from Alibaba? Um, fitness equipment, like home use, because right now we are in lockdown, and there's a now. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I am um, sorry. Jonathan, Jonathan. Jonathan. So, Jonathan, nice to meet you. So, I actually, I do something similar because I'm developing a brand myself, and I was testing different countries of manufacturing, and I did hear about Alibaba. So, I tested a few different companies from Alibaba creating, for me, it's more clothing line, lingerie, and uh, perfume. And I'll be honest with you, the, the quality of every company that I tested, Julia, go to the window, sweetie. The quality of the companies that I tested, um, can you guys hear my dog breathing so heavy? Can you hear Julia? My goodness, she breathes like a horse. Um, <laughs> I love her so much. So Alibaba, from what I understood, they actually don't give you good products. They do not give you good quality. They, it's kind of a cheap quality from the company. I tried about eight companies from Alibaba, and I did not like what I got. I would never want a company like that to represent my brand, something that looks cheap because I believe in high end. So there are other companies in, uh, actually, you believe it or not, in India, they have good, brand, uh, good manufacturing. In Pakistan, I got some good uh, reviews for myself for testing them. Uh, there's a lot of companies around the world that give you a good price, like China price, but much better quality. So I think you need to look into manufacturing of um, 
in other companies around the India, Pakistan. There's also manufacturing in Australia. Um, and I love her so much. So Alibaba, from what I understood, they actually don't give you good products. They do not give you good quality. They, it's kind of a cheap quality from the company. I tried about eight companies from Alibaba, and I did not like what I got. I would never want a company like that to represent my brand, something that looks cheap, because I believe in high end. So there are other companies in, uh, actually, you believe it or not, in India, they have good, brand, uh, good manufacturing. In Pakistan, I got some good uh, reviews for myself for testing them. Uh, there's a lot of companies around the world that give you a good price, like China price, but much better quality. So I think you need to look into manufacturing of... Um, in other companies around the India, Pakistan, there's also manufacturing in Australia, um, and even Italy. I actually saw some brands that came from Italy, and the manufacturing in Italy and the quality of the brand was high end. And I think that's what's really important to you as a startup brand to have really good quality because you want everybody to come back for you and refer you more business and quality stands for itself so you need to make sure the quality of your brand is number one thank you so much annabelle Bella. fantastic fantastic information was there anyone else that might have some ideas for jonathan where to source um fitness equipment other than through alibaba all right. John, you know, this, uh, this is Anya, the value coach. Uh, not necessarily related to that, but I was curious how you were um, making your money in your, your business now. Is it online and you're recording videos? So how, I guess, um, are people, you know, how are you generating income from your business? Oh, so I just simply post a picture of an Instagram page. I post a picture on the page and people, I have the all the information in the description and people inbox me to, to order. Yeah. I have an idea. I have an idea for you. Um, you know what I do when I need something, and I always do that. It works every single time. I, if I were you, I would post on all your social media, on LinkedIn and everywhere else, that you're looking for manufacturer, a good quality manufacturer from uh, co different countries that you would like to talk to. And then they're going to DM you. And I've done it before all the time. And it works for me. They reach out to me. If I have any requests, I just post it on my wall. And they come to me, they send me a DM, they send me a link to their company of the work. And that's a good way for you to have instant connection with manufacturing around the world that will see what you're doing. And if you have to mention this is a fitness equipment and they'll contact you and tell you, hey, why don't you check us out? This is our website. We'd like to talk to you. That's a, a really good tip because it works every single time when I do it. And this is CJ speaking real quick. Um, when you say you've got issues with quality, would you say it's a matter of some of the products are high quality and then you have a few that aren't? Or is it just the, the quality in general is low? And what I mean by this, let me clarify that. You receive 100 pieces of an item, 80 of them are good, 10 of them are a bit dented so to speak the other 10 are crap or is it a matter of the entire hundred are subpar quality all is crap all is crap okay then you're definitely working with the wrong manufacturer because one thing you'll want to look at is having possibly a quality control agent in the country where you're receiving the manufacturing from. So depending on the volume that you're working with, it often becomes very, very viable, right? To prior to the items being shipped, paying for someone to go and inspect the goods. And it's it doesn't even need to be ridiculously expensive. There are professional companies that do it that are very expensive, but one thing we found is just with a bit of networking, we can find someone young in that market, you know, maybe just out of university kind of thing, or just out of high school, uh, the equivalent of high school to be precise. And we can pay them, they'll go there, they'll take photos, they'll look through the product, 
one out of every like 20 items or one out of every ball a day is what and before we finalize depending on the payment arrangement with the client with the manufacturer so that might be something you'd want to look into there are companies that do it but they do get a bit pricey whereas if you just find someone local for example if the product is coming from china you find someone in china they will go as your company representative kind of thing take photos of the goods actually have a look you train them in terms of the level of quality that you're looking for and basically they get on a zoom with you and you know uh, give you feedback and then you can confirm the shipment as cj and i'm done speaking thank you cj that was excellent excellent advice and the only thing I'd like to say, Jonathan, to, just to give you a little encouragement, I know that this is difficult and um, a little frustrating for you right now, but it's what we call an elegant problem to have more demand than you have supply. It's it's not fun, but at least you have the demand. So I'm just going to um, really wish you well in finding a better supplier um, with better quality, but also that can they can get you what you need, you know, the, the numbers to meet your demand. Um, do you feel served? Yes, I do. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you. And I'm going to tuck you back into the audience right now. But please come back and let us know how this works for you. We'd love to hear your stories. And if you have another question, um, just jump right back up. And with that, I'd love to go to, let's see, let me see if I'm going to say this right. Abhishek, welcome. And can you start with my question is, please? Hey, thank you so much. First up, uh, pops to, you know, uh, you guys for being such a great bunch of moderators for, you know, sort of having this great uh, group. And, uh, to sort of, you know, put my idea or my question forward, I just like to put it forward that, you know, I don't really have a question question, but I sort of have an idea or more like a question, which I thought I would sort of put it here and probably get feedback from the great one of bunch of people who are here to, you know, sort of get an understanding if uh, I'm on the right lines. And if that is valid, I would probably go forward or else I can go back to the audience and be a good listener. Absolutely, please. All right, great. So I come from India and we cater to over a billion uh, people. I think everybody is aware of that. And uh, child security is child security or child safety is a far-fetched stream. And I had a very simple uh, idea in terms of, you know, uh, a fitness uh, band, just like a Fitbit, which is, uh, you know, uh, on a tracks their movement and with the host inverse. And sort of you're looking at the third wave hitting the country. Uh, we could have a band which would have a GPS tracker, which would, uh, you know, uh, notify, let's say, a parent or, uh, you know, somebody who's uh, taking care of the child, uh, notified in terms of, uh, you know, them getting in close proximity with somebody who has tested positive in let's say the last 10 days or 14 days, just to make sure that the parent is aware about their child's whereabouts and you know where the child is going. And you know, even in case uh, if a child is getting into a situation where uh, you know uh, the child can sort of you know notify the parent uh, by just tapping on the band. And uh, that could, uh, you know, help the father or the mother or even the child in any way. So it's a very basic idea. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much. And uh, uh, yeah. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Was there something else? That's pretty much. That's pretty much the whole. It's a very basic idea. And I haven't really thought about, you know, sourcing the, uh, the actual physical product. But yeah, that's pretty much the basic idea. 
So, Abhishek, I would love to hear from the other moderators, but if you guys are okay, I'm going to start because I actually worked with somebody on this idea. We never did anything with it, um, but this is, I've mentioned him before. He was a um, pretty interesting guy that I helped build two companies with, and he was Steve Jobs' right-hand guy back in the early days, and he always had this vision to have something that helped with child safety. He was very committed to this idea. We did another business that was kind of more medical to help people so they could get someone right away. That would be from the phone. Here's the thing with children. I love the, I do like the idea of the wristband. We talked about a wristband and the, the, the nice thing about having a wristband is that you're right, the child could maybe have a secret button or a way to tap it, although they might do that when they don't mean to. Um, but here's another golden idea for you, because I would love to see this happen. We never did it. One thing that children generally always have with them is their tennis shoes. Most kids don't change their shoes like adults do. So most kids walk around with the same pair of tennis shoes. And if you could put some kind of a tracking device in their tennis shoes, that might be a way where somebody wouldn't know it was there. They couldn't take it off their wrists if they were stealing them. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's just a thought, but we were just trying to think of a way other than putting it under their skin that they could wear it and it wouldn't be known to somebody that might be taking them. So that's just an idea for you. Um, anyone else want to speak into this? I think I saw John the bomb. No, John, yeah, did hey, you want it's to John the bomb building others means business. Um, yeah. You know, look, as, as a girl dad, uh, you know, three, nine, I have a nine, seven and a two year old. I love the concept of it, but, um, uh, trying to like you said show the the practicality of understanding how uh and how to hide it or how to make sure that the kid knows you know when to use it and some of those logistics i believe there are some things in the united states if i'm not mistaken that have some sort of gps system or or those types of things that have been modeled out but i was going to ask the gentleman um uh, i'm not near my phone here i'm sweeping the house here <laughs> um what um do you have a prototype already? Do you have something that is kind of able to be tested? What, or is it just purely the idea and then you're trying to go to concept? Hey, am I audible? Hello? Yeah. What's that? So we do have a prototype and uh, like rightly said, and like uh, what I heard from the previous speaker that, you know, uh, if the product can be, you know, sort of, tied to a different location of a body and all of that. So we did uh, sort of, you know, look at the other alternatives in terms of where we can sort of put the product on. But uh, when you sort of talk about a, a child and how they can, you know, make the most of it, I think uh, the wrist is probably the most, uh, you know, easiest option. And when you talk about the prototype, I think we've kept it fairly simple. This does not have a, a digital screen, which makes it uh, prominent for anybody else to understand what exactly the product is. So this is just a very simple, uh, you know, rubber band which has sensors and which has a GPS tracker, which cannot be, you know, uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, understood from the outside. And it's just tied onto the uh, the wrist. And if the child feels, uh, you know, there is an emergency or, uh, you know, there's a need to be, you know, uh, notified to uh, the bearer or, you know, somebody who is the owner of, uh, you know, the app or the product, they would notify just by, you know, a couple of taps. And just to ensure that, you know, if there are any accidental touches, we thought of, you know, uh, including a microphone which ensures that, you know, uh, if there is an accidental touch and, you know, the parent wants to know what exactly is up around the child, they can actually hear what's happening around just to make sure that, you know, they don't end up, uh, you know, reacting the way they should. And also one more bit, which we felt that can be added to the whole product is the fact that, you know, uh, in the close proximity, 
let's say five kilometers or two kilometers or three kilometers that is something which can be you know figured out later uh, there are police stations which can be notified in terms of you know there is an emergency and they can reach out to the particular you know google coordinates or you know the particular location from where the emergency signal is sort of set out just to make sure that you know uh, there is uh, you know help right there and just to make sure or just to add to it uh, we can sort of set a program where people who are uh, you know uh, ready to volunteer let's say if i'm sitting at position a and uh, you know something is uh, notified around position a1 or a2 or let's say position a and if i'm willing to you know help i can reach out to that position and take care of what the problem is so yeah yeah you know it's interesting abhishek i this is cheryl again um two rows above you and in the middle i um i'd like to see if i we i can connect you to my friend jay and because we, when we were doing this other business, I met Go, it was similar, but it was through the phone because there was a lot more to it. Uh, we, um, had a, we could go in, we could hear them going on. Uh, and then we were connected to a global yeah. network that actually could respond in real time, yeah. faster than even our 911, yeah. but worldwide. So I'd love to, it's been a while, it's been a number of years since I've been you know, with that, com you know, kind of looking at all of that. Um, but if you'd like, just DM me and I'll see if I can connect you. Uh, because I'm sure Jay would be very interested in seeing something great happen in India. So uh, I'm just really, um, I'm so glad that you came up on the stage and that you have this idea because I think that you could very well save lives with what you're doing. Um, would anybody else like to speak into a Bishak? Uh, can I speak, Nathan? Cheryl? Yes, yes, of thanks, course. Thanks so much. No worries. Uh, sorry, is it Abhishek? Is that how we pronounce your name, Abhishek? Yeah, that's how I do it. Nice, nice. What part of India are you from, Abhishek? Uh, I'm from Bangalore. Ah, oh, Bangalore. Fantastic. Lovely place. All right. Um, so there is a device that exists at the moment that we've bought for our nearly nine-year-old. It has a lot of the features that you've mentioned. Um, it allows remote dial-in. It allows a remote picture. Um, it's, it's shaped as a sort of smartwatch. You can dial from it, um, but we can actually listen in. I have to say that very softly because she doesn't know that. So I'm hiding out in the back of my house. Um, so we have a lot of those features, but the big problem we've found with it is that the battery runs flat because do you have kids yourself? No, I don't. And if I'm uh, allowed to, can I just stop you right there and talk about the product which I'm proposing? Because you sort of talked about, you know, uh, having a video camera and, you know, having a screen and all of that. So the product I'm sort of proposing does not have any of it. And it's just uh, like a band which just has a couple of sensors and probably uh, three blinkers, which sort of, you know, talks about the current battery life. And uh, again, battery life is something which a lot of uh, other people have a problem with. And again, if I am somebody who is, you know, uh, trying to, you know, ensure the safety of my child, I would want to make sure that the other person who's on the other side of the fence does not know that my child is wearing something which can sort of notify me about the product which my child is wearing. Hence, uh, we, uh, the product which we are proposing does not have any screen, no display whatsoever. And we are looking at a battery life for at least 20, 20, 20 to 25 days. And this is something which we have, uh, you know, sort of worked out uh, in terms of the current competitors, in terms of the fitness fans which we currently have in our country. And if you don't have an on-screen display and the kind of uh, sensors and the kind of technology which we are sort of trying to propose, uh, we are looking at a battery life of at least three to four weeks. So yeah, right back to you. Yeah, great. So all, all I really wanted to add was that there are products that from a consumer's point of view may have similarities to it. Uh, what you've proposed sounds absolutely fantastic and I certainly wish you the best of luck. The only two things I wanted to touch on was ensure you've got long battery life, which you've already covered, 25 days, and I would ensure something that's water resistant or quite a strong water resistant because we generally find it absolutely everywhere. Um, so best of Really appreciate it. I know I'm saying that wrong. Um, do you feel served? Uh, DM you, you know, hook me up with the kind of, yeah. 
to do that. So please do DM me and please come back and let us know how this is going along just for, for everyone here in the group. We're just so happy you were here. And um, I'm going to take you back into the audience, but please stay with us, listen, because you might hear some other great ideas. And do raise your hand and come back up on the stage when you have another question. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds good. And thank you for being such a great host. Really appreciate your idea. And thank you for having me here. Thanks again. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good day. You too. Um, so I'm going to do a quick reset here, and then I'm going to ask if anybody would like to relieve me of my duties because we're, we're going out to dinner here shortly. So um, go ahead and flick your mics if anyone might be available. Do I see anybody? Nathan? Cheryl, I'm not going to let you go without a meal. You're a lovely person. You need to eat. So you, you just tell me. You say, mangiare, mangiare, and I'll step in. No problem. More importantly, I need to stay married. I haven't even been married a year yet. <laughs> so got to keep this man happy. Um, so that being said, I think I'll do a quick reset, and then I'll pass it over to you, Nathan. And Michelle also clicked your mic. So just so you know that you've got two of the greatest people here. I know... Um, okay, well, with that, you are in the What It Takes to Run a Million Dollar Business Room, and this room has been going on now 24-7 for 35, 36 days, something like that. We're starting to lose count, but we have we are on a mission with our CEOs <laughs> of the club, Kate and Daniel, or you might just call them Date who are on a mission to impact a hundred million lives. We're well over 200,000 just in this past 35 days. I know many more since this club started and it is such an amazing panel. You guys, I have made friends now that I know will be friends for life. The knowledge bombs that are being thrown, the gems that are being dropped are just, um, they're, they're priceless frankly. So with that, I'm going to encourage everyone to ping a few more people into the room. It's Saturday night. Where else would you rather be? <laughs> and do that. Do a quick poll to refresh because that's how we feed the algorithm. The algorithm loves that. Make sure if you're new guys, just have something in your bio because that way we know you're a real person, not a robot because those little bots like to come and disrupt the stage. Please try to link to an Instagram or Twitter also so we know that we can connect with you and you can connect with us. And did I miss anything, guys? Okay, and we have our wonderful Kate, the pivot queen that is second row up in the left. If you see her just under John the Bomb, she started this room with her husband, Daniel. They are amazing. So we are also grateful to them. And I am going to go ahead now and just pass the mic over to my friend. Where'd you go, Nathan? Nathan. And um, I'm going to sit up here for a little bit longer. And then eventually I am going to go to dinner with my husband. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cheryl. And hope you have an amazing dinner. Um, so can I just get a quick mic flash from the moderators that are in the room that are actually here and awake? So we've got Morgan up the top, Renee, wonderful, Brad, lovely to see you, Michelle, you're amazing as always, SG, great. All right. Um, can we just do a quick intro, um, starting with Morgan, just to give yourself maybe a 20, 30 second intro on what it is that you do and how you can help the people in the room, please, Morgan. Hi, thanks. So uh, I am a film and TV producer. Um, we work with uh, non-scripted. We, we, we fund, I do line producing, executive producing. Uh, and I also run an e-com business where it is a lifestyle brand and we donate to um, rape crisis centers. Uh, it's a social enterprise. Uh, please take a look at the bio um, and I will save time. Thanks so much. Wonderful. And I saw John unmuted. So go for it, John the Bomb. Hey, hey, it's John the Bomb. Building others means business. That's my little one. She just got home. So uh, business capital, uh, startup to 25 million is kind of a sweet spot. 
SBA, uh, conventional and equipment finance. And then we also own a personal finance agency helping you retire in, uh, in these times. And uh, lastly, with Gopher CEO with the uh, Joint Ventures White Label Services. And I have an incredible impersonation of Annabella's dog. I think that was contextual for anyone that just walked in the room. John the Bomb was referring to one of our other <laughs> panelists earlier that had a dog that was continuously barking. Thank you very much, John. And CJ, sorry, I mean Renee, please introduce yourself. <laughs> CJ. <laughs> I'm Rene Godofroy, um, motivational speaker, trainer, coach, author of Kick Your Excuses Goodbye. I'm all about rewriting our stories to serve us instead of keeping us stuck. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Rene. And Brad, please go ahead. Um. Thank you, Nathan. Love it when you're moderating. Um, I'm Brad Menarkhamson. I um, am a person of a uh, key person of influence within the hospitality, uh, commercial furniture, restaurant, and FMB sector. Um, that's pretty much where I've spent most of my career. Um, I'm also an angel investor and spent a lot of time with startups, uh, incubating them to the point of where they raise capital with a specific focus on uh, female entrepreneurs and startups to try and equal the balance out between funding for male-based uh, founders and uh, startups against female. There's an equity there, and I love to bridge that gap. I am Brad, and here to share and learn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brad, and it's always great to have you in the room. SG, could you give a bit of intro on yourself, please? Hello, everyone. I am SG. I am a confidence and mindset coach, author, and co-founder of the Confidence Corner here in the clubhouse and work with Morgan as a co-founder in that space. And I love being in this room and I love helping others build their confidence, build their success, strategize their business through their confidence. So I'm SG and I am done speaking. Thank you so much, SG. And Relentless, have you walked into the room yet? All right, over to the amazing Michelle, please. Thank you so much. This is Michelle in the blue. I bootstrap my business from, <clears throat> excuse me, in my home, Facebook, e-commerce, then grew to a storefront from Anchorage, won several um, best in state awards for my boutique. And we are military, so moved to Florida and just currently yesterday opened my new store location right here. So this is Michelle in the blue and I am complete-ish. Michelle, I have to ask, how did this store opening go? It was a very soft opening, so I only told friends and family. Wonderful. I'm sure it'll keep going stronger and stronger. And Hector, Pasquale, Giuseppe, or any of the three of you there. All right, Cheryl, we know you're still here, so give us a quick intro. Well, apparently you're not here. <laughs> we got Maya, Melissa, and Danae, Laurie, anyone else here? Yes, I'm here. Cool. Do you mind to give a quick intro? And first time I think we've been on the stage together, so lovely to see you. Lovely to see you here too. Yes, um, my apologies. I'm at my son's baseball game, so I've been in and out. Uh, my name is Danae Escanavarino. I am. Uh, I've been in digital marketing for over 25 years, so I'm kind of a digital dinosaur. I own an agency, and we connect brands to multicultural consumers. We do that through three owned channels, which are email marketing, where we manage over 100 million records worldwide, uh, SMS marketing, which is basically the same, and our affiliate network, where we connect, uh, where we help affiliates monetize their audience with the brands that we work with. Um, this is Danae, and I'm done speaking. Thank you. Wonderful to meet you tonight. It sounds like you've got some great experience. And just to introduce myself, Nathan, I'll be moderating over the next hour or so. And I have a financial services background. I own a financial services company in Australia, also own a digital marketing agency and have been an early startup investor in a lot of businesses. And I'm just going to do a quick pull the refresh. And I can see that Shelley has been waiting really patiently. What was your question today for the panel, Shelley? 
Hi, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I've been listening and I appreciate uh, everybody's uh, you know, inputs. Really very helpful to learn from you all. Uh, I just have a question. Um, so I actually spent the last uh, four to five years, I would say, uh, into studying a lot about uh, personal growth, personal development, and things like that. Uh, you know, I literally studied everything that I could find on the internet, spent a lot of time in that alongside whatever I do. So I have a question, if anybody can help me uh, with this, that what do you suggest are the few things in this area that, uh, you know, someone can do as a, either a business or, um, you know, in terms of helping others as well, like, uh, you know, where there may not be a very high financial benefit, but still helps. But uh, at the same time, I would like to know if there is something uh, which can be both ways done with financial benefit as uh, along with, um, you know, helping the community. Thank you. Great question, Shelley. Do you mind if I summarize it and you tell me if I've got the message or not? So you're basically asking in terms of how can you help people? How can you develop them, but also monetize that skill for yourself? So you're providing both an essential service for other people, plus you're also making sure that you can pay the bills and keep eating. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I do. Paying the bills is not the question, but, you know, it's of course, more creating more income stream, income flow, uh, which can help, you know, create the bigger, bigger business with that. All right. Great Thank question. You. Pleasure. Can I get a flash of the mic from any of the moderators that want to have a go at this one? I know you're here, John, Morgan, Renee, Brad, SG. You just gave your intro. Ah, go for it, Jeanette. Go for it. Okay. Um, hi there, Shelly. Can you tell me a little bit about what your talents are? What are you passionate about? Because um, I so and maybe I just didn't I, I didn't hear correctly, but um, I did hear about what you would like to do for people. Uh, you want to help other people. However, I didn't hear about the things that are you know in your wheelhouse as far as like talents or things that you're passionate about or you know skills what is it that you're good at what is it that you want to be good at so uh, uh danae thank you i have spent as i mentioned i spent a lot of time in the past few years understanding personal development and have uh you know because from coming from very, very low self-esteem on how to uh, you know, go to a higher confidence level and things like that. But I don't know if there is a way to do something with that and build a business around it or uh, do something which can help the community at the same time monetize it. Well, there's definitely um, a few things that come to my mind immediately. One of those is uh, being a speaker, right? Being a motivational speaker and uh, specifically focusing on the steps that you took to get to the point where you feel confident about yourself uh, and, and, you know, the demons that you kind of exercised, the things that you solved and how you solved them. That's one option. Another option is, and this is not in my wheelhouse, is coaching. There are a lot of opportunities for coaches, um, and I'm sure somebody here who is a coach could speak more to that. But that's also an opportunity where you can, um, you know, coach clients. And as far as helping a community, I always think that if you're doing something and you're, uh, you know, you're successful, you're making money from it, there's nothing that's stopping you from, um, you know, giving away some scholarships for your services to students that might need it, right? Underserved communities, things like that. So many different ways to help others uh, while, you know, while you're still doing well, because you can do well and do good all at the same time. So I would, I would definitely um, either focus on coaching and then extending those services to people who cannot afford them to help your community, um, or again, going on the speaking circuit, uh, you know, writing a book, being a motivational speaker, things like that. Um, and again, if anybody wants to jump in here with the coaching stuff, I am definitely not an authority, not even close. 
So this is so, the nine I'm speaking. Thank you, Dana. Uh, just to follow up on that, what you said just now, I mean, so I understand that you can do something like that. You can uh, build, uh, you know, a coaching business. But my question more is like, how, if somebody has done it, how did you go about it? And how did you actually start where and where how did you take it forward uh for somebody who's never done this so and has zero knowledge about how to begin all right so renee go for it uh, um I'm, I'm trying to get a clarity on the coach and so is how do you how do you go about start being a coach is that the question you want to launch your coaching business sure yeah oh okay um, well, the best way to is to first define the problem that you want to solve. I mean, I know there is the idea of being a life coach, but even if you're a life coach, are you, uh, for example, um, like SG, are you a confidence coach? Are you a mindset coach? Or uh, what is it that you want to help somebody achieve the results, right? There's got to be a problem because if they don't know there's a problem, they don't buy. You have to start with the problem. Then um, once you do that, you, I mean, I know a lot of people talk about certifications. If you have done it either for yourself or you have helped somebody, so you want to start with your first client for free, uh, somebody you know that, you know, you start with the results. Like, you know, we'll start working for three months and at the end of the three months, this is the result. They have a problem, then they have a place that they want to be. You can help them get there. Then that person is going to give you a testimonial, a video testimonial. And then you find a second person who most likely would watch that testimonial and pay you maybe half price, 50%. Um, or you can do it two by two. It's like two free people and then two free half price, then you are ready for one full price. But the first two is you want a video testimonial because that's the proof is in the pudding. Like if you say it, it's bragging. If they say it, it's true. So you can start with um, people you know. But more importantly, like if somebody, let's say if your delivery was, you know, effective, effective Facebook advertising, then you would go inside the Facebook manager and you would, you know, show them and help them and they will make money because of the work you do. It can be anything. It could be leadership. It could be anything, any topic. There are a gazillion of topics. It's the same thing if you want to become, let's say, a motivational speaker as well. You've got to determine what is it that, what is the end result that the meeting planner or the company will pay you, um, you know, once you speak. And I think somebody mentioned it. Speaking is a very good way to start getting coaching clients. Uh, the thing about speaking, uh, it's like they pay you to 